Hello, PDC Hayward here doing a Soul Forge draft. 2.2 uh, just came out today. I just made a few pack opening videos and now I'm going to do a draft. I'm going to do this as one big long video, so if that's a problem, um, I'm sorry, but that's how it's going to happen. First pick. Now, look, honestly, for me here, it's between a Zrath and a Frost Frostwild, and I would rather be in, in Necrium, but I'd prefer to have a Frostwild. Uh, so. What will I go for here? It is Wrath, because I'd hate to not be in Necrium, basically. I really am digging Necrium in draft. Uh, between these two here and this guy gets fierce, so I'm going to take a Field Marshal and trend more towards cards that spawn other cards. Of these, it's a toss up between Etherguard and Metamind. Metamind gets you more cards when you need them, but there's nothing particularly bomby yet that I need. Uh, Etherca Etherguard's good at level 1, I don't really play much level 2 or 3, and he relies on spells, but I'm going to go for Metamind there. I'll probably see another Etherguard later. I like the Symbiote, uh, I think it's just a really nice solid card with the regen, and considering I've got this Wrath as well, putting a regen together can really irritate your uh, opponent. Zillion Host is god awful, he's one of the new cards, and he's just crap, and I, I quite like Aegis Conscript, so that's very much a no brainer. Um, people swear by group meal, and I don't have any spells yet, so I can't afford to take it, but I like a Graveborn Glutton. glutton. Uh, if neither of those two are in, it would be probably Grimgaunt. Uh, I'm going to take group meal, just to see if I can get the raw power out of it that uh, I should be able to. And here it's Nexus Pilot, or Meta Transfer, and I'd rather have the big body, so I'm going to take a Nexus Pilot. Overwhelming Force is very nice. This is one of the new cards, and I wouldn't mind grabbing it just to see how it plays. Um, this will make only two spells, which is totally fine for my second pack. And it's a nice heroic, uh, and it goes kind of well with the theme of cards that spawn other cards. Um, oh, I don't know which one to pick here. Probably a Villian Force. I quite often go for the Bone Scythe and then draw him when there's no level 1 or 2s and he's just a wasted card, whereas this guy is always fairly reliable. Steel Shaper there. I've got lots of nice uh, nice cards to go with it. Spirit Reaver is a new one. Uh, having said that, opponents getting health is not that common in drafts, so I'd really just be grabbing him for his base stats, which are good. They're good base stats. Can't complain about those. Uh, but I would probably rather have a... What's this guy's stats like? He's actually got better stats and he's new, so let's grab him. <laughs> let's grab the new and shiny. No, never. So I've already got a Steel Shaper. Two Steel Shapers. That'll work quite nicely. That's an awful hand. Uh, I'll take a Dreadbolt because A, it's a heroic, and B, it's a pretty solid card. Um, Vengeful Spirit is nice against a lot of things. Touch of Blight is a little bit tempting just because I have nothing currently that deals with Night Gaunt. Having said that, Heavy Artillery is a way of dealing with Night Gaunt. Uh, so I'm going to take that. Because if you can chuck down a creature in front of the Night Gaunt and Heavy Artillery, it can be very hard for them to deal with. Uh, I really like Gloom Fiend. I've got four spells, so I'm not... I am tempted by both those cards, but I don't want to grab another spell. Oh, Metamind Overseer. Another new one, which has decent stats and nice abilities, so I'm going to grab him. I will try not to grab any more rank up cards, however. Forge Plate Sentry is always nice, Graveborn's always nice, Corpulent Shambler's always nice. It's really 6 1. I'm going to grab the one that synergizes with my Steel Shapers, but that was really a. Any of these will do. I'm going to take a second Vengeful Spirit because it's just such a nice counter to so many cards that you see. And Zillion Crusher has really nice solid stats at all levels. Better than. Better than Sparkbot? Yeah, 16, 18 at level 3. I'd rather have a Zillion Crusher than a Sparkbot. Uh, and I've got four spells. I'm entering my fifth pack. Sap can just be so nice, but I can't afford another spell, so I'm just going to take another reliable card. And if I see a Sap later, I'll grab it. Sparklight Assassin is really nice to have a kind of crappy level 1, but a great level 2. You play this during player rank 2 to... Uh, and yeah, there's nothing else there that's even vaguely tempting. Uh, I'm going to take Marifine for the underdrop. Again, I don't really need any... I've got, one, two, I've got four spells. I can afford to take a Digitize, which can just fuck up every trade on the board really nicely. Um, so Deathseeker, I was talking about synergizing with my, uh, my Field Marshal and my Overwhelming Force, but I think it's a bit late for that. I am tempted by Digitize or Marifiend or even Vault Tactician. These are all nice cards. 
Uh, what am I lacking at the moment? What have I got? I don't have any underdrops, so I'm going to grab a Marrow Fiend. And I could go for a second Spark Blade, I could go for a Necrotic Worm, which is crap at level 2, but great at level 3. Uh, I've already got a Spark Blade, what have I got? I don't have any real bombs at level 3. I mean, arguably Forge Plate Sentry. Slash Nexus Pilot, but no, I'm going to take the Necrotic Worm, because I do want to have a strong play level 3. Uh, Peacekeeper is so conditional. Steel Graft is actually kind of nice, considering how much armor I've got, and I can afford to grab another spell, so I'll grab a Steel Graft. Take a second Worm. Necrotic Worm, specifically. That's really nice. That's... I don't have enough Necrium to justify a Dark Shaper. Here it's between an Ixian Marauder, which, if you can bulk up some more armor on it, can be a real threat. Got a Psionic War Charger, which is just really nice at every level. I'm going to take the Marauder, because it's a rare, and it's allied, and it has the armor. Wow! Um... <laughs> so I'm probably taking a spell here, which is okay. I don't have enough Necrium for that to be worth it. This is another really nice kind of anti Night Gaunt card. Uh, Spirit Leash is generally pretty good, but I don't have much I want to kill here. Um, I'm going to take a Spirit Leash just because it can be so nice, but I don't think I'll get a lot of use out of it. Uh, I'll take a Grave Ghast. Really, there's nothing much I want here, but he can he can get good. Picking it, okay. Uh, Flesh Fiend is a lovely, lovely pick. <clears throat> and I'll take a Spectre. Because, again, he fills the same role as Spark Blade in that if you play him during play rank 2, you've got a pretty decent level 2 card in play rank 3. And even his level 3 is not that bad. Let's go! Uh, this deck is good. It's lacking a bit of late game power. If I think the game's going to go late, I really have to level up those... Um, there's worms, which I don't like to do, especially because there's no in-hand leveling cards. Uh, that was that was a pretty pretty easy choice, I think. Uh, it's got some nice cards that require growth, and I don't have I've only got Spirit Leash in terms of growth in this deck, but I do have a lot of armor, and so if I can get some armor going, it's an interesting play. I don't know why you would do that. Oh, um, so he's basically put two cards into not even killing my Axis Pilot, so I can build some pretty solid board presence here by putting his Wrath out, which will probably require one or two cards to kill it, and then level up the Forge Plate, <coughs> because Forge Plate can be such a bomb at levels two and three. Uh, he is playing a, a faction which does well against both Regenerate and Armor, but I've got a really nice board presence at the moment. If I can try to maintain this, something like Group Meal can really help me just keep this board presence Ooh, Meta Mind Overseer. I might play that just to see how it goes. Uh, he's playing a lot. He's playing the same factions as me. He's not playing very well, I don't think. <laughs> um, so that's okay. I'll probably be able to group meal next turn and really get that board lead going. Yeah. Okay. So he's. I think actually I'm better off just putting more and more threats out at this stage. Uh, Metamind Overseer, definitely. And then it's toss up between Blight Skull, Phantasm, and Zillion Crusher. Zillion Crusher becomes a 10 12, which is pretty scary. He becomes an 8 10 with a very conditional kind of uh, thing. So I'm going to go with the, the more reliable card. He's a better underdrop as well. Um, so what's he done? He's Meta Sighted and Contagion Surge. So he's going to have a free spell and another leveled spell next round. Spirit Leash might be worth playing here on my Zrath. I haven't leveled up any other spells. I definitely will play, play the Flesh Fiend, because that, again, becomes quite a big threat. Uh, okay, cool. So he's just kind of nerfing cards instead of actually dealing with them. So I'm going to Flesh Fiend in the center row, and then Spirit Leash turning his Forge Plate into a buff for my... I think for the Overseer. This keeps me way ahead in terms of board presence. Uh, and it means I get to draw some extra cards, which is nice. Again, I'm in a really strong early position here. This could turn around... Oh, God. <laughs> that is a nice card. You get to draw a shit ton of stuff. Um, this could turn around because he's been leveling all those cards, so I've got to got to watch out for that. He's probably going to get more reliable hands than me in this next stage. So I really want to utilize this whole board presence thing I've got going. Did he get to trigger that? Or did he not have any spells in hand? 
No, he did not have any spells in hand. Oh, this just doesn't tell you. Um, so I can actually give my Zarath's way more. Okay, this is sort of a risky play. I'm going to Zarath here. And then I'm going to Spirit Leash, making this Zarath huge. I'm going to battle first through that little bit of extra damage. Uh, if I Nexus Pilot, I'm losing a card anyway, so I might as well lose a card into making a second big threat with 6 Regenerate. Is it plus 7 or plus 9? Plus 8. <laughs> Neither. So that'll be a 10-10. Or I could make him a 17-18, which is actually going to be really hard for him to deal with. Yeah, I'm going to do that. Uh, yeah, I don't care about that much about Zarath. I would rather have one big threat than two medium-sized threats. So if I have a big threat, he I don't think there's anything he can really do to deal with it. Whereas this guy, if I make him big, he can take them both out with his level 2 draws, which he's pretty reliably going to get. This is where I play my Sparkblade and my Grimgorm, so that when we enter level 3, I have even more reliable cards, unless my Vengeful Spirit's going to be really good, such as against a... Um, cool, that I don't care about. That is annoying, but ultimately fine. Grimgaunt trades off there. How did you get regen? Alright, oh, task impact. So they're just going to regen against each other, which is actually fine for me because I don't care too much about Crypt Conjurer's secondary effect, whereas I do care about the extra two regen he gives my Zrath. Um, most likely going to be playing a Marrow Fiend to block something here. Oh my god, that's a really nice card. I'm very happy with that decision. <laughs> um, cool, that I don't care about too much. So I'm going to eat that and then... That's free, nice. And it actually dies now. So I'm going to probably Marrow Fiend in front of the, uh, the Crypt Conjurer. Yeah. Who else are you going to give Defender to? The regaining of the health, of the no health is annoying, but uh, beyond that, I'm not too worried. So this is where your underdrops are useful, because I would not be able to kill him this turn otherwise. And then, it's really six to one, half a dozen other. I will go with a Marauder, just because it's a nice solid card to level. You don't see a lot of um, Stasis Warden decks in draft. Metamind Overseer at the perfect frickin' time. And then I'm tempted by the Steel Graft, especially if it keeps my Zrath alive. Uh, if it keeps my Zrath alive, I'm definitely playing the Steel Graft, chucking it on either the... if I can keep the Marauder a bit happier. Ah, these Contagion Surges, he's gotten my Zrath back down. And he's got his health back, it's annoying. Um, so definitely Metamind. And then beyond that, I mean, if I steel graph this guy, it becomes a real nuisance. But a Tarsi Impact is going to bring him up to. It'll be on three. It'll be, oh, yeah, no, Tarsi Impact. Oh, yeah. Tarsi Impact will be enough to kill him. I definitely want some armor on my Zrath. And let's check it on the Metamind as well. I don't care too much about the Nixium. Marauder. So, as you can see, I totally lost my, my early board presence that I was talking about. Oh my god, I really like those Metamind Overseers. Um, and I'll probably play my level 3 one, just because it's a nice level 3. And I'm leaning towards Flesh Fiend, unless there's a case where Sparkblade will do the same job as Metamind. Metamind. Yeah, so he, he's... all the draws, all the cards that he managed to level in play level 1 have really added up for him, as you can see here. Uh, let's go for a Flesh Fiend here, and a Metamind Overseer here. Overseer or Overseer? It's going to annoy me. Uh, yeah, so he's going to have... Ooh, this is some nice cards. Um, I love not drawing all level 1s, frankly. <laughs> Anything that's not level 1s, to my mind, is a nice hand. So I'm definitely playing my two level 2s there. What am I worried about? He hasn't leveled up anything particularly scary. He might have been in hand leveling a Scrap Forge. He's jump blocking at the moment, which is always a good sign. 
He's gonna give the armor to. Why would you do that? That is a that is just an unconditionally stupid move. Unless you've got another contagion surge. No. See that that armor did nothing. It literally didn't have any effect on the game whatsoever. Weird. Ah, now I'm actually gonna have full lanes at this point. So I might just overwrite my Zrath, maybe. I would like to kill that Marauder. Yeah. It's hard to complain too much when you have to overwrite creatures. Um, Spirit Leash here. That would have been nice last turn. Oh, well, there we go. So yeah, that early board advantage I think managed to get it for me. He put a lot of a lot of effort into uh, leveling up cards, which I don't think ultimately paid off for him. It's yeah, he sacrificed so much board presence early on, and I did draw very well, admittedly. But uh, yeah, he sacrificed enough board presence that a bad draw fucked him up. Pardon my language. Whereas had he not been, do I not get a daily logging reward? No, it's not a new day. I did all this yesterday. Um, yeah, he sacrificed a lot of board presence, which is okay to level cards, except that it means... Because even with level cards, you can still draw badly. And if you've got no board presence and you draw badly, you're just dead. And that is what happened. Uh, I think this is probably a 3-1 deck. That's mainly because it doesn't have enough in terms of actual, like, game-ending threats. You know, there's no Necro Slime, there's no Night Gaunt, or there is a Forge Plate... But if I had like two or three forge plates, that would be enough. But as it is, I don't think that this is going to... I don't think I'm going to get a 4-0. I think I can probably pretty easily get a 3-1. And I think the worst case scenario here is a 2-2. I would be very surprised if I won 3 to this deck. Um, really happy with that uh, Overseer. He's just, yeah, really good. That Those two extra cards when you need them are invaluable. Having said that... Probably not going to play him right now because it's turn one. Depending on if he goes super aggressive. If he goes super aggressive, I'll play defensively. Otherwise, I'm going to go Steel Shaper and Necrotic Worm and aim for a really strong end game. Field Marshal is nice. I can screw up so many trades. Like, I might go Steel Shaper, Field Marshal. Uh, what do I want to go here? Necrotic Worm trades with him, Field Marshal potentially doesn't, because if you can buff his uh, attack, then it trades, yep. So I'm going to go Necrotic Worm over here, and a Steel Shaper over in the corner, where his Alone General's effect won't actually matter. Hopefully I'll actually manage to kill that General before he gets any effect out of it. That's honestly a pretty bad hand. Uh, too many spells that I don't want to level and play level 1. Overwhelming Force isn't bad, admittedly. It's three, six, double. Um, Dreadbolt, I can't imagine getting much use out of unless he plays a... Oh. <laughs> How interesting. Um, if he plays, say, a... Ooh, that can be scary. It's the guy who damages himself to give someone minus two, minus two, which is pretty bad against armor and regen. Both of which I have plenty of. So I could, like, putting Marrowfiend out there basically is just giving him a free kill because his Spite Sower is going to murder it. I think I want to put that there. And then... I don't even know what to do. I don't like this hand. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll leave room for a potential um, Nexus Pilot. Heavy artillery on him means that even with a minus two, minus two, he still kills him. There's nothing I want to level here. Three attack to these creatures doesn't really matter because he can just get killed by anything. He's going to die this turn no matter what I do. I could dreadbolt him. Oh, he's only going to have two attack because this guy's going to be dead. So the Riley Symbiote is actually a pretty good play there. And heavy artillery on him guarantees that I kill him. Okay. That's that's not like considering the hand I have, I can't see a better play. There might be one. If you if you think that was a really obviously better play, let me know. Flesh Fiend in the center row. Or maybe Metamind Adept in the center row and then Flesh Fiend if I don't draw anything better. Flesh Fiend's nice. I'm not complaining about drawing a Flesh Fiend. Sap! What are you doing? What are you doing, sapping my dude? 
What? <laughs> okay, I'm going to go Meta Mind Adept here. I'm going to ignore that for now. Meta Mind hit Adept here to trade off with that alone general, and then Flesh Fiend probably in front of the Spite Sower, unless I get something that lets me deal with it. What do we got? Nope. I mean, Vengeful Spirit will kill it, but I already had that, and I don't care for it. There we go. So now that Spite Sower is dead next turn, no matter what, he can make it commit suicide to kill this guy, which is not an awful play. Definitely playing the Marauder, and ooh, Blight Skull would actually do its do its thing here. I don't think it's worth it, but uh, it would do it. Blight Skull would get me a free kill of that alone general. But I'd much rather have a Nexus Pilot leveled up, frankly. Ah, nasty. Oh man, he's got a really good board presence going on. Maybe I do want the free kills that I can get from this. Ah, oh, that's such a good card in draft. Um, look, Nexus Pilot is not nearly as good now as it would have been at the start of the turn. Because it's going to be on four health and facing level twos. Here, yeah, Nexus Pilot and then Blight Skull. Means I'm taking 21 damage over here. No, no, I'm taking 15 damage over here. Yeah, it was 18, it would be 15. But I really want to deal with that fucker before he gets too annoying. And anything I put out here is just going to die to him. So, oh, I don't like this. I'm really behind already. What happened? <laughs> I go Marauder and Blight Skull. And then I'm leveling up better cards. For me here, it's a toss up between Nexus and Blight Skull or Marauder and Blight Skull. Black Skull here, weakening that Strategist, and I'm just going to take the 15 damage. And I like Marauder, especially if I can get some armor onto him later. Yeah. In no way am I sure that that's a good turn. Oh, it is 18 after all. Oh, it's even more than that, because it's 6, not 5. Um, yeah, I'm not so sure about that turn, but we'll see how it goes. Oh god, that is not a hand I want. Um, that's fucking awful. Jesus Christ. So that alone strategist is dead. <laughs> dead, dead, dead. Oh god. Oh god! Yeah, okay, I'm in a bit of trouble here. Because I can't kill enough of the creatures. Let's kill that one off and chump block that one. Urgh. Jesus Christ. <laughs> okay, here we go. Anixian Marauder will... so, Metamind will trade off with that Spite Sower. And I'll see what else I draw. Anixian Marauder can eat that uh, Etherguard or the General. Ooh, Nightgaunt. Okay, Nightgaunt's less scary because he's playing at one level behind. I just have to make sure I level up something that can deal with him. Oh god! <laughs> Stop playing cards! Jesus Christ! Oh my god! Okay, yeah, no, I'm fucked. Arrgh. Jesus. Yeah, I'm so dead. It's really annoying. Um, well, let's take out the bulk of the damage. Oops, should have played the Metamind first to see that I drew a... Nothing good. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, I'm pretty fucked at this stage. If he draws really badly for the rest of the game, I'm okay. Uh, Necrotic Volume in front of that Night Gaunt, unless he manages to grow it. And then Aegis Conscript in front of the Etherguard, giving a little bit more armor to the Nixie Marauder, which could potentially save it in an upcoming trade. If he's smart, he won't block both my creatures, he'll just put out more threats. There we go. Uh, Aegis Conscript will save that in the upcoming trade. And I don't care so much about that. So, that was... To my mind, a poor play. He'd be better off putting out more threats and doing more damage. Because now I managed to build a little bit of board presence, which could be all I need to stop myself from being utterly fucked. <laughs> it might not. I don't have much board presence, but it could be enough. Let's see. 
Flesh Fiend Steel Shaper is pretty nice. Flesh Fiend makes it even harder for him to pound through that last damage, and Steel Shaper means that my upcoming creatures will stay alive even longer. <sighs> That's a non-issue at all. That's a weird play also. I don't know what he's doing. That's that's just a really awful play. Um, cool, so he's given me the chance to actually build up my board presence again. Because now, even if I draw all level 1's next turn, I can uh, potentially still save my dudes and fuck up trades, even though I'm so far behind in health. Yeah, he really should have just been aggressively attacking rather than pointlessly blocking. That, to my mind, is enough for me to... Oh, that's a nice hand. No matter what happens, I'm playing my two level threes. Ideally, in a way that... Uh... Oh yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> Whoops. Forgot about him. Okay, that's a little bit scary. My Marauder can eat that Night Gaunt and survive. I'm a Necrotic Worm. I'll just put here... He's got the potential to put through a lot of damage. If he draws both his level 3 guys, then he can potentially put through 20 damage this turn. Moving this guy over here and playing them here and here. Hopefully he won't. <laughs> it's my ideal situation. Oh, thank God, he's, he's, not, he's not very good. Phew. Again, at this point, you just want to be pounding through damage in his shoes. Oh, sap, that's annoying. Okay, now I can add some armor to these guys. I can add a lot of armor, because I can add... Hmm. I can add two, three, four. I can add four armor to one. So if I give this guy four armor and this guy two armor... Oh, I can't really afford to ignore these guys, though. But I don't have... What does he do? Six or eight? Six. Um... Spirit Leash is plus five, not enough to save him. If I ignore the threats, I'd be taking 16, potentially way more damage, so I can't do that. Okay, I'm going to battle. I'm going to chuck a Blight Skull down here and a Field Marshal here. Alright, if I do a Field Marshal... Oh, hang on. If I Spirit Leash onto him, I kill that Strategist, which is actually really nice. And he survives. And if I Field Marshal first, I can give this guy some more armor. It means I'm ignoring him, but he'll only have four attack. It's weird. 16... There's 22 there. Even though it's not the original. It's an interesting bug. Um, okay, so. If I Field Marshal here, I can give this guy a bit more armor, which is very nice. And... They're both a bit more attack. And then I can Spirit Leash this guy under here, killing that Strategist, which puts me in a really nice position. I give some armor to the Necrotic Worm. Now he's got a Sap, so I don't want to... I want to spread my, my threats thin, basically. He's only got a Sap level 2. Okay, I'm going to do it. So yeah, that alone strategist is currently the biggest threat because I'm on such low health. So by taking him out, he can't move around and do damage. And he's not buffing him. And if he uses his ability, he'll be down to 10 health, which I'm so okay with. And something like Steel Shaper. Oh, Steel Shaper and Aegis Conscript would be very nice. Oh, that's annoying. That's okay though. Steel Shaper here. Assuming he does his thing. Is he going to do his thing? Yes, great. Okay, so Steel Shaper here, and then pretty much anything, and just keep on giving that armor out, basically. Uh, Metamine's also tempting, but at this stage I'd rather have all the bonus armor. Let's give the... F oh! <laughs> oh wow, I'd, I'd taken his health down to 20, that I didn't notice. When my health is low, I assume that theirs is high even when I'm, you know, regularly doing damage. So, that's 2-0, and I think that's largely that Spirit Leash play I'm very ha happy with. I think that was the play that I could have really easily just been like, block, 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 and I would have lost. 
<laughs> Although, yeah, I largely won that because he kept on blocking my threats instead of putting his own threats out when I was on really low health. So that was a that was a nice little win. Uh, but yeah, that Spirit Leech play I was particularly happy with because it eliminated a few threats. It eliminated one threat that was threatening in two ways. Um, so I'm getting messages all over the place. Uh, yeah, very happy with that. So, here we go. Um, like I said, 2-2 two, two is the worst I can imagine doing in this deck, and I've now accomplished better than that. Well, not a lot of choice there. No point in Vengeful Spirit and Empty Board, so let's go with the Black Skull, who does have pretty nice stats. 14, 17, 11, 3? Yes. Yeah, he's nice. He's just a nice little creature. Um, most tempted by Flesh Fiend and Forge Plate here, because I like leveling both... Oh, hiccups. Those cards... Uh, if Field Marshal will cause a trade to be different, Anixian Marauder, as you saw in that last game, is a nice card. It just does really well. But we'll see if he's playing a slow deck or a fast deck and see if he's playing Necrium, which he probably is because everyone plays Necrium in draft. Magma Hound, Tempest. Okay, so Forge Play in front of that eats it uh, pretty nicely. I'm worried about Stone Fists. Stone Fists are the scariest thing about Tempest. Windborne Hellion, that's interesting. Um, so, I'm not going to Field Marshal because they trade off currently anyway. Forge Plate here seems to be a no brainer. And Isim Marauders there is also quite nice. I'd only take three health and I'd get one of it back. Three damage, I'd get one back straight away. So, I put him here, then there's no chance of uh, like a Roar or a Twin Strength or anything like that screwing up the trade. He's playing Tempest, so I'm very tempted by armor. Flesh Fiend or Forge Plate is a choice here. Flesh Fiend is a better threat against nothing, which I'm currently facing. Forge Plate, they're both nice cards to level, honestly. 9, 15, 8, 15, but this 8, this 15 also has another 8 and 5, and this 8 also has another 5, so I'm going to go with the Flesh Fiend. Uh, you can disagree with that, that would be perfectly valid. I think that's the play. I'm not too worried about the Windborn Hellion at this stage. It's pretty hard to put a decent Windborn deck together. If he manages to kill that, uh, then I can just Symbi it or Zrath in front of it and get that regen happening. I would like to see a second faction. That would be really nice right now. Currently, my first call... What was that? Hungering Strike? Damn it. <laughs> I hate Hungering Strike. Oh, Zrath. Wish I had anything that could buff up that Flesh Fiend, but I do not. Um, so, no matter what I play here, it's going to die. So let's just go with a... I mean, a Nexus Pilot, even? <laughs> anything dies to that. What do I want to level the most? Yeah, honestly, a Nexus Pilot. Ah, oh, it's such a dumb play, but... Um, I don't want to ignore it because I'm playing Tempest and they have many ways of getting damage through quickly. What would I most want to draw on level 2? Not an Nexus Pilot because then I'm really limited to here. I would want to draw a Zrath. Maybe a Symbiote? What's he playing? He's playing lots of low attack creatures, or low attack creatures. Symbiote trades nicely with Zrath and with um, Windborn. And almost with Magma Hound. Yeah, I'm going to go with the Symbiote. But, again, that is not the guaranteed best play. And I'm just going to put a Zerath against his Zerath. Yeah. It's a tricky one. I'm, I'm, I'm currently happy with that play, but I don't know how well it'll go in the long run. Especially now I've seen that he's playing Necrium. Uh, my regen is not going to be as good as it would otherwise be. Oh, that's a nice card. Oh, Death Current, go away. Uh, that's fine. I can chuck either a Venge Vengeful Spirit. It's actually going to be pretty good against all this regen. And because we're about to level up, I'm just going to ignore that Drake and get my Steel Shaper on. Because my level 2 cards should be able to eat that pretty easily, whereas my level 1 cards will not do so well. So, he's playing a lot of regen. He's playing. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, so that... Kills that Drake and then immediately gets his health back. Uh, Ven Spirit Leash, Ven uh, nothing else there is particularly useful. That's worrying. 
I might even heavy artillery onto that just to deal with the threat immediately. Ventral Spirit doesn't do particularly well against um, Predator because their triggers happen at the same time. Uh, whereas Heavy Artillery can guarantee the death, and I don't mind leveling up a spell in player rank 2 as much. Oh boy, okay, so this is probably the last of my level 2s that I'll see in this round, so I want to build a really strong presence so that I can... Oh, fuck off with the death current! <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> That's fine. Um, I want to get a really strong board presence going, which means regen and spawning, and this is this is actually a slightly stronger card than Zrath if you don't have any other zombies, which I don't. So I'm going to go with that, and I'll go over here where I'll take the direct damage from his whatever level 1 he triggers, and be able to probably trade with it next turn. As predicted, uh, probably going to Vengeful Spirit here. If my Field Marshal can mess up a trade, I'll mess up a trade. Oh, that's a nice little combo! I really like that. <laughs> That's fun. Um, yeah, so Field Marshal here and Venture Spirit here is the play. Field Marshal unfortunately does not... Yeah, I think... I think that Zrath survived... Well, it'll be run. Oh no, that... With Field Marshal, that Zrath will now be eaten by my Flesh... We will trade my Flesh Fiend level 1, which is nice. Uh, so I'm going to do that, and I'm going to do that, and I'm doing okay here. I'm not doing amazingly. He's obviously better, doing better than me on the on the health front, but I'm holding my own, and I've got two very nice cards to draw at rank up, uh, which I will play. <laughs> Ideally, if, if hopefully this Flesh Fiend trade actually happens, because if it doesn't, then if you like Hungering Strikes or something like that, It'll be annoying, because I'll have to waste a card. That's fine. Because now, my Blight Skull will take him out. That was minus six. He'll be on five, and I'll get to draw an extra two cards. Great. That is like a perfect little... That's exactly what I want. I'm really digging these new commons. The rank-up commons in draft. They're fun. What is that? <laughs> okay, well, first play will be Metamind Adept in the hope of drawing something that's not a frickin' level 1. Fortunately, I'm going first, so I won't be having to react to level 3s. But that's ridiculous. Um, Metamind Adept to hopefully get me something decent. He'll be playing catch-up against those dudes. Uh, and then if I draw... Oh no! Oh no! That's okay. Nothing I can do about that. Because my Dreadbolt is of the wrong level. Uh, worst case scenario, I just don't put it... Oh, God. <laughs> I'd better get amazing draws for the rest of this turn, I'll tell you that. Um, I'm thinking Nexus Pilot here, just to build some kind of board presence. But yeah, that's a, that's a ridiculously awful draw. There we go. Okay, so Flesh Fiend can eat that Grimgaunt. I don't mind Flesh Fiend losing its health so much because it, you know, if he kills it, it just brings out more dudes. Um, Blight Skull has nice stats, just really nice stats at all levels. Okay, I might put the Flesh Fiend over here because it's the only card that will actually definitely kill him. So that was, a, that was a bit of a no-brainer turn. There wasn't a lot of choice there. Um, probably Spirit. I'm guessing he's going to bring out a level 3 Drake. If I can... Sp oh, Spiritly should be nice here. Because i got that Nexus pilot that's not doing anything. Oh, shit! Shit! Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Okay, that's very bad. Uh, that's a very, very bad spot to be in. Um... I can't even, like, Vengeful Spirit onto the Grimgaunt, because he gets plus six, plus six, and this does minus six, minus six. So I could Spirit Leash the Vengeful to do nothing, basically, <laughs> would be the outcome there. Oh my god, that's so... Oh, that was really well played. Um, so also, Spirit Leash doesn't even frickin' kill the Zrath. Shit. Okay, let's put a Vengeful Spirit over here. Is there any point in doing that after combat? 
I mean, the Flesh Fiend is just kind of delaying it for a few turns, which is not the end of the world. But also, I don't want to leave anything alive near the Grimgaunt, because it's freaking huge. Do I even have anything that can kill that Grimgaunt? Like, if he comes over here and does a, a Virix Embrace, he's a 26-26. At that point, I don't think there's anything I can do. Um, oh, well, let's, let's do this, I guess. And just really hope he doesn't draw anything that lets him utilize that Grimgaunt. Holy crap, that was a nice turn for him. Anixian Marauder does some damage. Anixian Marauder kills off that uh, Zrath and survives, but the thing is, yeah, I'll have to put a Vengeful Spirit in front of the Grimgaunt and just stall for a turn. Not even a full, like, round, just his turn, my turn only. Oh my god, that was such a good play. I'm really impressed. Well done, Fumoz. Fuzmoz. FMN 0Z. Fuzmoz. Okay, so I'm probably putting an Ixian Marauder down here to just get some board presence back. There's nothing I can do about the Grimgaunt. He's going to move over here and kill this one somehow, and I don't see any way I can really stop that. If he doesn't, great. Oh, he didn't. Great. <laughs> Hopefully, no. Okay, that's fine. It's not the end of the world. Means I can start whittling away at his health, at least, with my uh, Vengeful Spirits. Whew, boy howdy. He wants to do something here, otherwise I get another two cards on level up. Oh, he's not going to do anything there. I'm okay with that. So, I'm definitely dealing very, with a very scary Predator, but I'm managing to do a slight amount of damage, and I get some bonus cards. So let's see if that's enough. Oh, crap! Didn't calculate the trade. I forgot that he gets his health back. That's sort of his thing. Metamind Overseer will now kill that Predator, which I am very, very happy with. Um, they trade off. That's fine. Whew, okay. I might have a chance. I don't have much of a chance, but I might have a chance. Provided he can't buff that. If he gets like a Nargith... Oh no, even if he can, this guy gives him plus 3. So I can do up to 18 damage to him this turn. Whew, uh, I totally miscalculated that, which I'm a little bit annoyed about. But that happens sometimes. I thought that he wasn't... Yeah, he was at 14, and I was like, that's the, that's the most health he can possibly get. It wasn't. Um, so... He will be dead now, however, because he doesn't have a card in his deck that can stop that. Hungering Strike's annoying, but not the end of the world. I'm on very low health, which is annoying, but not the end of the world. Then my Overseer, and Arian Field Marshal actually fucks up that trade, which is good. Thank you, Overseer. Thank you for existing. So that Vengeful Spirit actually made all the difference in the end. That's pretty nice. Um, if he throws a... Drake out here, that's I can trade off with that with the heavy artillery. I can't afford to let that survive because I'm on 23 health. So that fortunately stops that from doing anything. And I get another Flesh Fiend, which is a really nice card for board presence. Uh, what do we got here? Sy symbiote. Too late to start leveling up the Dreadbolt, so I'll probably just go Symbiote in front of Zrath. And oh god. I mean, I could go with a symbiote here, but he's just going to ignore it, move to the side, and then I can't deal with that Zerath, so I'm just going to... <sighs> I'm going to ignore the frickin' Predator at the moment. I don't want to even give him anything that can feed him. Come on, something that can kill him, otherwise it's game. Yes! Okay, so, he doesn't have anything that buffs him that I've seen so far, so I can kill that and then presumably deal with whatever other threat he puts out. If he's clever, again, he just puts cards here and here and probably wins. If he's less clever, he puts cards here and here and lets me come back. That's stupid. Oh, that's actually not too bad. That was a good play. That's a very good play, but not enough for game. Uh, let's draw some cards first. Cool, that doesn't change anything. Uh, now, if you can buff that Wind Primordial in any way, which Tempest is very good at doing, he's okay. He wins. Um, but I've got a really nice board presence going on here. 
If I can get, if he, if he, oh. No matter what he plays in these lanes, I'm pretty happy against. If he can buff the attack of that, he just wins straight off. Otherwise, he probably moves us over and puts out two threats, which I've got the cards to actually deal with. That's not a problem that I can see. That's also fine. No, okay, cool. Yeah, again, I would have put out threats rather than dealing with my legitimately non-threats. Um, I would actually like to kill that guy straight off, but I don't think it's worth a spirit leash. Worth using a spirit leash on. Because no matter who he gives, uh, I'd rather have board presence at the moment than worry about the mobility that he's offering. Because if I can just keep on filling lanes, which Flesh Fiend does very well. Oh, that's nice, and that's nice. Oh my god, I could win this turn. Okay. That's okay. As long as I have an empty, a, a unblocked creature. 15, yep, that's game! Ha <laughs> ha! Oh my god. That's game. Uh, that's game. Let's go heavy artillery. Field Marshal. Which I think the most. No, I could have gotten six instead, but. Whew, that was close. That was very, very lucky on my half. I was also lucky on his half. Oh, not lucky. It was stupid of me to leave that uh, Nexus pilot out as a 0 2. And then I was pretty happy, pretty happy with how I strategically played against it. But, um, yeah. Leveling up, those, leveling up those lane fillers is what made all the difference there. Also, yeah, him not... Again, that's the most common way that I think people lose, is when they've got their opponent down to, like, sub-30 health, and they're blocking instead of putting out new threats. That is what I think has won me the last two games. Had he just been putting out threats... Had he gotten anything that buffed his, his creature's attack, he would have won that turn. But uh, anything that... Yeah, putting out threats would have been a better play for him than dealing with my threats because he was at 68 health or whatever he's at. Okay, can I 4 0 on camera for the first time in a long time, I think? It's not my first 4 0 for a long time, but it'll be my first one on camera for a while. Leaning here towards uh, Aegis Conscript and Zithian Crusher. Zithian Crusher is just nice. 10, 12, 16, 18 is only one less than the. Oh no, it's two less. 18, 19, that's big. I always forget how big Necrotic Worm is at level 3. Cool, so I want something that actually deals with that, which would be nothing out of here. Armor would... so he's playing green... oh, so he has no way of dealing with armor. He's playing Aloyan Uterra, you can tell by the fact that it's an allied effect. So I've put this guy out, he just flat out trades. And then if I just Aegis Conscript onto myself... If I Aegis Conscript onto him, he I take slightly less damage, and he doesn't... Yeah, I'm just gonna. I was gonna say if I put a, if I put armor onto him, conscript. That's what I was trying to find in an earlier video. <laughs> if I put my armor onto the Zillion Crusher, it only deal. It only stops it from trading with uh, cards that give it plus one plus one, like Grove Huntress or Primal Search. Um, and frankly, he's more likely to have say a, a Twin Strength or a Matrix Warden, in which case it wouldn't make any difference. I'm thinking a second crusher and then maybe a symbiote over here. Spectre's okay, but I'd rather level up for the late game against a Loyan. And I don't really want a spirit leash at the moment. Spectre also means I take five more damage, which shouldn't make that much of a difference, but you want to take as less as little damage as possible. Three more damage, not five more. Five damage total, three more damage. Uh, not much I can do against that Sky Knight, so I'll probably just drop a Steel Shaper against it if it doesn't move. I mean, Vengeful Spirit. Ooh, Dryad's Boon, that's scary. So I really want to kill that quickly, <laughs> because that's going to grow and grow and grow. Uh, Vengeful Spirit and Group Meal would kill it. Depends on what else he plays. If he plays, say, a, a Bright Tusk Sower, where he's getting multiple lanes, Group Meal does more work for me. Um, Vengeful Spirit brings it down to a... Currently, it would be a 3-4. No, it would be a 3-1. Cool, that's fine. Don't much care about that. Okay, so I'm going to go Vengeful Spirit, and then... At least Steel Shaper? Yeah. Yeah, I want to get my armor on against this combo. 
because they have no good way of dealing with armor except for Oxidon Spitter. So if I can get armor out on all my creatures, it messes up the whole planet. Why would you poison him? He's going to trade next turn no matter what. That, to my mind, was a poor play. Uh, Steel Shaper there means I can't play a Nexus Pilot. I'd rather play a Nexus Pilot. It means, okay, if I play something there, it means he can't attack for the damage and then move over. If I play something there, it also means that he can just move and do the damage and I don't have anywhere for my Nexus Pilot to go. But I'm okay with that. Nexus Pilot is not, not a huge priority this game. It's a bit late in the play around for it to be super useful. Okay, so he's probably going to go up to a 6-4, which means that dropping his Wrath against it would be a bad play. Uh, at most he can go up to a, what, 8-6, in which case the Marrow Fiend's the obvious play. Um, I suspect he's going to buff it twice, buff it once or twice, then move over and trade with that Symbiote. That would probably be my play. If he manages to get three procs by playing like a Everhounds and then something else, then he could eat that Steel Shaper. But Steel Shaper is not a huge threat at this stage. Whereas the Symbiote keeps on getting himself back. Okay, so. Probably gonna Marrow Fiend against it. Uh, yeah, he's got a Dryad's Boon, so I wanna level up the Marrow Fiend so that I have the power of the 11 attack coming out and play a level 2. Ooh, that's annoying. Um, <laughs> I don't know what to do about that. I could go... I could trade a Zrath off, which seems like such a, a bad trade. I can't ignore it. Definitely can't afford to ignore it. Overwhelming Force doesn't give enough for my Steel Shaper. What I'll do is I'll go Zrath here and Heavy Artillery on the Steel Shaper. Because that Heavy Artillery can, as we saw last game, make a lot of difference. I haven't leveled any spells yet, so I can get away with one. Yeah. Yeah, against Dryad's Boon, I want my big, my big threats. That's okay. He's a creature up, but... Oh, what? <laughs> what is this shit? Okay, well, I'm going to Marrow Fiend against this frickin' Arian Battle Droid. Oh man, try its boon on that. Yep, there we go. <laughs> right, right as after I said it. Shit, that's a, that's a that's a nice combo, boy. Um, what's this? This is plus ten, so anything will trade with that now. I think I want to level up probably the shaper. Maybe the oh, this guy's pretty good because of the armor. I definitely need to kill that before it gets ridiculously big. Um, what do I want to most want to level? I would rather see a Anvillian at level 3 than anything else there. Done. Bam. Cool. Symbiote can eat that. And then Forge Plate. He's got me on the, on the run here. Um, like, he's cards ahead. He's cards ahead. Oh god, stop playing cards! That's like streets ahead, it's, but better. It's like streets ahead, but better. He's playing cards, it's really rude. Yeah, that is rude of him. So what I really want to do here is play Nerali Symbiote and eat that, but then I've got two cards that I have no way of actually dealing with. But um, you have weakened both of them. No, I haven't touched either. No, no, by using, by taking out the Strategist. I have. It means I stop four, eight, I uh, stop eight damage. But, yeah, I'm just, I'm behind on cards here. Um, okay, I'm going to do it. Ideally, he'll move his Sky Knight over and trade, not realising that he's way ahead in terms of uh, board position and cards, but that's really annoying. Here we go. Oh, Steel Shaper, that's right. That was a really good idea at the time. <laughs> a little bit worried here. He is ahead. Oh, this is Gavin, everyone. Say hi, Gavin. Hello, Gavin. I was talking to them. Oh. I said for them to say hi. Okay, Zerath here, and Steel Shaper to trade with that. Oh, God. No, okay, Steel Shaper to trade with that, to eat that, and Zerath here. Yeah, I think I'm too far behind at this stage, but let's find out. It's 27 damage. Fuck. That's pretty good. Zillion Crusher eats that, or that. Eventual Spirit does the same. Oh, that's a new one. Oh yeah, yeah, new cards came out. Yeah. 
When you rank Christian Lang, it's minus three, minus three. And this one as well. This one's freaking amazing. <laughs> you rank, draw two cards. Mm. And that's when you want to draw the cards. It's really, yeah, it's great. Yeah. Okay, so I'm definitely playing my two level twos here. Good. That I don't care about, that I don't care about. Cool. And he's going to be alive no matter what, so let's put him there. So now I am one card ahead, but a lot of health... No, not even one card ahead. Shit. Okay, Forge Plate Sentry eats that quite nicely, and then Zithian Crusher to deal with whatever he plays. If he gets his, his strategist out early, that's game. If he doesn't, I've got a shot. That's fine. Keep drawing those level ones, mate. Palin? I'm playing against Palin? Vault Blockade? Wow. That's a weird play. <laughs> okay, like I'm not, I'm not going to complain about it. Uh, now I want to clog up mobility as much as possible so that his alone strategist doesn't have as many places that it can actually do things. So I'll leave the empty lanes, the end lanes empty only. Overwhelming force means that I take care of that vault blockade and potentially fuck up some kind of other trade. Um, vengeful spirit plus spiritly should be nice. Oh god, god. I mean, there's nothing I can do against that, so I might as well Vengeful Spirit and Spirit Leash onto something to get more of a board presence going. Shit. Uh, yeah, that's really scary. That breakthrough, eh? So, if I can't deal with that next turn, I'm dead. I can totally deal with that next... Oh, not quite. I can almost deal with that next time. Yes, I can. If I play a symbiote here and a field marshal here, if he plays a dryad's boon on that, that's game. Well played. That's game. Well played. <laughs> Nothing I can do about that. Yeah, I can survive a turn, but... Oh, how much damage am I doing? Oh my god! It, seriously, mate? You didn't calculate the damage? Oh my god, that is... That is really great, <laughs> because his mistakes led to you. He had he had a creature with breakthrough. I'm on nine health. He left me with enough creatures to do fatal damage. Oh my god! Like I don't. So uh, that was a four zero. <laughs> Three of those victories were due to the opponent doing really stupid things. Uh, but I'm still saying that I did well. I'm pretty happy with that. Well, you had the good sense to go up against stupid enemies. <laughs> uh, not stupid. If I you think guys that's, are that's, that's the key it, to victory right there. Uh, Making so that, sure your enemies are less good than you are. I think I think they were good. I think they just missed the, the fatal thing of making sure that, you know... You die? <laughs> yeah, I mean, see, in two of them, they I was on, like, 20 health, and they get blocking my creatures instead of putting threats out. And then that last one, I think that was a simple miscalculation. Let's open some packs. Oh, we've got Cersei. So the host and nothing else new. And a platinum prize pack. Very nice. Yeah, I know what they do. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> but are you sure? What do we got? Do 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 Gox. Ooh. And, and Scorch uh, Flame. Yeah. Oh, and Flame Breaking Broker. Sweet. Mm. One of the new heroics. Whew. Anyway, that was me playing a draft game. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Um, Wait, hope you, which camera? Uh, that no. one. This camera here. I hope you've learned mainly about, honestly, like, if you're ahead on life, don't block when you can put through more damage. And, yeah, that was a simple miscalculation on that last guy's turn, I feel. Uh, had I had any less attack, he would have been fine. But as it was... I don't know, I had, that, had the guy who boosted attack in my hand. I had a few cards that boosted attack in my deck. Whew. Um, thanks for watching. I hope that was informative and helpful and hopefully fun. I know. I learnt a lot. <laughs> uh, and I'll see you next time. Peter out.